13 books and over 300 pages later, and finally January comes to an end. Hi, hello, how are you? I'm Alex. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. And if you're coming back, we're best friends now. You know how this goes. I hope you're doing well. And if not, I totally get that, you know. Life is, life is rough. I feel like especially in the winter, life is just rough. So if you're not okay, that's okay. And I hope tomorrow is better, truly. Today, I'm just going to go through all the books that I've read in January, which is a lot. This was a month of graphic novels. It was the month of like fantasy, magic novels. Honestly, it was a good month overall for reading, even though it was like a hundred days long. Let's be real here. So I'm just gonna separate these into like three different sections because I read some children's books, I read some graphic novels, and I read some novels. So I'll just start with the children's books. I read um, these two books that I think are paired together. The first one is I Lost My Talk by Rita Joe, which is illustrated by Pauline Young. And then I'm Finding My Talk by Rebecca Thomas, which is also illustrated by Pauline Young. And I Lost My Talk is about that disconnection between new generations and older generations um, of indigenous families. And it's all about like losing that language, losing that connection to the culture. And then I'm Finding My Talk is about building back that connection. I thought they were both beautiful. They're like poems in a children's book form and the art was really really lovely. I really like Pauline Young's art and it was really interesting to read a children's book by an indigenous author and illustrated by an indigenous artist. And then the third children's book that I read was The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse by Charlie McKessy, I think. This was a really sweet book. I, like, I'm having a hard time understanding whether or not it's, like, a picture book for grown people or if it's a children's book. And that's because it deals with a lot of themes like grief or loneliness and, like, figuring out your place in this world and the meaning of life. It was beautiful, nonetheless. Really nice prose, really nice art. I really like the calligraphy throughout the book and I think this book is kind of like a warm hug, so if you're in need of one of those, definitely check that out. And then I have five graphic novels uh, on my list of read books in January. The first was March by John Lewis, which I think is part of a graphic novel trilogy, which is all about the fight for freedom and pretty much the fight against segregation in the South, in the States. And it dealt a lot with certain parts of history where people would have demonstrations and certain segregated like restaurants and cafes and stuff like that where they would fight for their seat and fight for the right to be there pretty much. I thought it was interesting. I really like history told in a graphic novel form. I think that's a really great way to illustrate different aspects of history and to really get that vision across to your readers. So I thought it was an interesting graphic novel. Uh, then I have In Real Life by Cory Doctorow, which was illustrated by Jen Wang, whose work I really, really love. And this was a cute story about this girl that becomes involved in this computer game and she gets involved in the whole world building and team kind of game and she connects with a boy that lives in China who is working. His work is essentially this game. And the book is a lot about self-confidence, self-realization, and fighting for what you think is right and sticking up for your friends and finding meaning in things that you enjoy. I thought the art was really cute. I really liked the main character and it was just a fun little read. Then, a new favorite, which was On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. Gorgeous graphic novel. This was incredible. Like, I'm at a loss for words. I really liked the art style. It was like black and white drawings with a little splash of color. It was like pinks and blues 
which I really, really like. I love graphic novels that are depicted that way. It was about this team where they go around in space and kind of fix up old buildings for different customers or different clients, whatever. And the main character, Mia, we really get to know her backstory and we get to know her relationship with this girl, Grace, who she was really close with in high school. And she's kind of trying to find her way back to her to get a chance to say goodbye because she never had the chance to say goodbye and Grace kind of left in a last minute panic because of space politics. This was a five out of five stars for me. Absolutely gorgeous book and I'm so excited to read more of Walden's graphic novels. Then I read a memoir by Makala Garib called I Was Their American Dream which is pretty much about her life growing up as a mixed kid. Her mom was from the Philippines and her dad was from Egypt. And it was just all about what it's like to be a mixed kid, what it's like to grow up in a mixed family, what it's like to grow up as a mixed kid and be not enough of one and not enough of the other. And I thought it was really funny and sometimes really relatable and it was just a good fun time. And the last graphic novel that I read this month was The Daughters of Ease, or Ease, I don't know how to pronounce it, by M.T. Anderson. I think this is based on a myth or a historical tale. This was a really pretty graphic novel, like the art was just really, really gorgeous. It was a dark tale and it reminded me of this other graphic novel that I read last year. It was just a spooky fun time. Then the first book that I read in January was kind of an anomaly for me because I don't typically read long books and this was probably the longest book on my shelf other than Infinite Jest. And that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I have no words, this was so, so, so good. It's a fantasy novel, it's about strong badass women, and it's about dragons, both dragon riding and dragon fighting. Oh my god, it was everything I could ever want in a novel. I buddy read it with a friend of mine, and I just had the best time ever. Honestly, I'm glad it was as long as it was, because if it was any shorter, or if it was separated into a series, it wouldn't have had the same effect, you know? And like, she's thick. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a, a long book. It's over 800 pages. But if you feel intimidated by it, which like I did, then I just wanna tell you that it is quick in the sense that you're constantly picking it up and you always wanna know that what happens. So it doesn't really take like an endless amount of time to get through. So it doesn't feel as long as it actually is, if that makes sense. It's it's fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. And the cover, can we just talk about this? Like, a shiny dragon on the cover? What more could you want? After that, I picked up Paranisi by Susanna Clarke because I was still in the mood for some magic, still in the mood for some fantasy, but in shorter form. This won the Woman's Prize for Fiction last year, and at first, I didn't understand why, but the more I read, the more I was like, okay, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I definitely get it. And it soon became a five-star read for me. The first 50 pages for me, it was kind of one of those moments where you're like, either I'm way too dumb to understand this book and it's just going over my head, or everybody's pretending to like this, just to seem smart and interesting. <laughs> and it's neither of those things. Like, in the beginning, you have no idea what's going on, and as the story progresses, you start to piece things together along with Piranesi. And it's just a fascinating novel. I have a hard time explaining what it is without giving anything away. I think it's best to go into it without knowing much, which is how I went into it. I, I didn't know anything other than the fact that it won the Women's Prize for Fiction. Everybody raved about it, but I never read any synopsis about it, and I think that's the best way to go into it. Just if you feel stuck in the first 50 pages, trust me, it's worth pushing through. And then I listened to the audiobooks for Blue Lily Lily Blue and The Raven King by Maggie Stevire which are the last two books in the Raven Cycle series. 
and I loved them so so much. The last book made me cry and books don't really make me cry that often. <laughs> so it was just it was just a great way to end the story and tie in all the characters. And I was sad to say goodbye to all the characters. However, Maggie, she wrote another series about Adam and Ronan. So I'm really looking forward to reading those. I put the first book on hold at the library. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to continuing with that story and continuing with those characters. And last but not least, I read Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. I've never read anything by David Mitchell before. I know he's written Cloud Atlas, which is quite popular, and there's there's a movie based on it. And I've heard a lot of great things about his writing, but I've never read any of it. I was really drawn to this cover, which is gorgeous. It's a Bosch painting called The Garden of Earthly Delights. I also just really love a book about a band, a fictional band, in like the 60s, 70s era, and this is exactly that. And it's told from different perspectives from the band members, and it's such a wild, trippy ride. It's another one of those books where it's just great to go into it not knowing anything about it. All I'm gonna tell you is it's during the psychedelic scene, there are great characters, I love Elf, she's my queen, Jasper is hilarious. Dean has my heart. It's chef's kiss. Phenomenal. And that's it. That's all for January. Um, it was a lot of books. Thank you for, <laughs> for coming on this ride with me. And I hope you got some recommendations out of this video. And if anything, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys and all the support that you give me. I never would have thought I would have reached over 100 subscribers in six months. I honestly thought it would just never happen, but it's so fun to make these videos and to put them out there for you, so thank you so much. If you like this video, like this video. If you want to see more of my content, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.